owning your domain all right now when you have your your, your site concept and you have the whole plan and everything and you, you have your, your design tools and, and everything's coming together one of the one of the, the first things that you need to do is secure your own domain name now your domain name you know www.yourstore.com or whatever your business.com is going to function like your business's address on the internet ideally you like to find a domain name that's going to give the public the general public an idea of uh, what they're going to find what's what's available at your site and even better than that if it's a service what your site is going to do for them or what your product is going to do for them at the same time making it short enough to be brandable and rememberable now that may sound like a tall task but uh, it, it's it's we were going to show you a method of, of doing this and working it down so that you find the perfect name for your business and for your product in this early stage you have to steer clear of all of the temptations that are put out there by web hosting companies and and other uh, sites that offer to give you free domain names or subdomain names uh, and things like that you want your own individualized domain name that represents your company and your product no, you don't want one that's bundled together in some package or something like uh, all these companies are out there offering new webmasters and new new business owners like yourself. Because what happens is, if you commit to a package, if you commit to a package, and let's say you want to get the domain name from this company, and then you know this package also comes with hosting and everything else that you would need under the sun, and it's probably overpriced. If you ever wanted to switch companies, they're going to tell you, hey you gotta keep this domain name with us or you forfeit it or something crazy like that so there's a lot of companies set up like that on purpose with the the, the the main idea being to trap you in and to keep you under some two three year contract alright and that's not to scare you off it's just to say when you buy your domain name when you get a domain name make sure that you're getting just the domain name and not some bundled package but before we get into the actual uh, you know package selection and hosting and things like that Let's take a closer look at the the entire the uh, the the, uh, the broad view of the domain name hosting relationship. Okay, the purpose of the domain is to call the presentation of a web page to be viewed through your web browser. All right, that's an easy way of describing it. So generally speaking, the pages that you see on the internet are uh, being hosted by a web host, and you're looking at that page by a, 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 by accessing it through a domain name. A host, a web server, has an addressing protocol known as the Internet Protocol Address, which is an IP address. Okay, if you ever hear the term IP address, they're referring to an Internet Protocol. What this is, without getting into the, the, uh, too much of the details, that it's an address that's unique for each uh, machine that is connected to the Internet. So, for example, Yahoo.com, as it says here on the screen, uh, is addressed at 68.180.206.184 yahoo.com is the domain name that that uh that redirects to that address okay simply because which would be easier to uh remember you know what if your business was yahoo and you wanted to do your customers to remember your website which is easier to remember yahoo.com or 68.180.206.184 you know, so that that's the purpose of the domain name. The domain takes the place of the addressing format. Here's an analogy for you for for this type of setup. Let's say you have a let's say we're just just use Dave for example. Dave has a web design business or a design service, and it's called Dave's Designs. Okay. Now Dave's office address is 128th Main Street, Building A, Suite 514, Number 11 any city New York State All right. now what if Dave every time instead of having his name instead of being able to just say Dave's designs what if say for instance his secretary instead of answering the phone Dave's designs she had to always answer the phone 128 Main Street building a suite 514 number 11 any city New York State how can I help you that's ridiculous so instead of that, she can just say Dave's Designs. You see, it's much easier to refer to that address as Dave's Designs. And that's how domains work to simplify the web server address that you saw for Yahoo on the previous page. 
you know, the hosting is like Dave's office building, okay? Your hosting, your web hosting account is like the office building. Let's say this, this web, this building here. That's the hosting server. It's the physical structure that holds the interior, the furniture, you know, the painting on the wall, etc. So when you go to Dave's designs, you can see the room that he's working in and see, I don't know, his, 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 uh, diagrams on the wall, which would be like a website. That's how you access a web page. You go to the address and then you see the presentation. But then again, you have to remember a web server itself, you know, the server can hold more than one domain, just like an office building can hold more than one tenant. So don't be surprised if you, let's say if you pinged a certain domain and it got the same result as another domain uh, IP address. For example, uh, different sites can have the same IP address. Yahoo.com is addressed at 68180206184. Yahoo could have a, an entire different site called Boohoo or whatever, and it could be at the same IP address if they put it on the same server. Just like tenants in the same building can have the same address, maybe with a different number at the end. So I hope that helps you to understand the relationship of the domain name and the the hosting, the actual server that's going to host the uh, domain, host the website. Remembering that the domain name pulls up the presentation, which is the website, which is residing on the server, which has an address, like you see here, that also the domain name forwards to. That it doesn't forward to, but it's it's the uh, the easier way to remember this number here. Now, in the inner parts of a domain name, you may not have you maybe you know this and maybe you don't, but uh, the, the domain itself is broken down into several parts. The first part is the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and this is hyper. It stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. All right, you don't really need to know you know how or why that's there. Just know that every domain is going to start with it. Now, some domains uh, that we go through shopping networks or uh, different secure transactions, they may have an HTTPS, which stands uh, for it's a secure domain. Okay, the S at the end means secure. All right, so then that means that typically speaking, it's going to have some type of option for you to accept credit cards, uh, some option for you to give sensitive information. And a lot of times what happens is before you can get accepted into these companies, they want you to have a secure domain. Uh, so it's HTTPS. All right. And you want to keep that in mind because depending on what options you take later on, you may have to get an S domain. Uh, either through your hosting company or your, or your uh, domain provider. Next is the WWW part, which stands for World Wide Web. All right, so that follows the World Wide Web usually follows directly after the hypertext transfer protocol. Now, a lot of times you'll see domains with and without this and still takes you to the same site. Nowadays, it's not as important initially, uh, but you always want to include that. And later on, when we talk about uh, search engine optimization and things like that, you want to be consistent with how you display your domain name. So if you're going to start off by, you know, printing on all of your documents in your business uh uh business pieces and, and link building and things like that with the www uh then you should keep the www but your site just to let you know your site will still take the viewer to your actual site if you leave off this www they'll still wind up at your site all right uh your site right here is actually the domain name that you're going to pick this is the name that you're going to choose followed by the dot com which is an extension dot com stands for commercial and as you probably already know, there are a lot of uh, extensions nowadays that you can choose from. You have dot, uh, .biz, dot .net, dot .org. You really want to get the dot .com extension for your domain first. All right. You want to secure that first because that is the the natural, uh, the natural domain extension that someone would type in when trying to remember your business. All right. Later. At a later date, or all up at front, depending on what your, your your financial situation is, you want to go back and get the .net and the .org. All right, you want to control those three. If you do those, you can control your brand. What this does is it allows you to lock up the the marketplace for your brand. You're building a brand for yourself, okay? 
And we're going to be getting into a lot of brand building later. But as you're going through setting up your business, you're building a brand that's going to uh, stand the test of time and profit for you for a long time to come. So this brand, you want to keep it uh, untarnished. You don't want your competitor to be able to come in and buy your domain name .net just because you were too lazy to get it in the beginning. And now they could either trash your site or say, you know, if you were looking for Dave's Golf and, you know, they bought Dave's Golf .net and you own Dave's Golf .com. If you're looking for Dave's Golf, well, we have good news for you and bad news for you. Bad news is Dave's Golf sucks. And the good news is Harry's Golf is much cheaper. They could put that right on Dave's Golf .net because you didn't buy the domain name. All right. And that's just a, a dramatic situation. But you it's, it's to illustrate a point. You don't, you don't want to uh, try to be cheap. And then end up costing yourself money on the back end. All right, so that's why extensions are important. And after that, you'll usually have a forward slash, as you see here, and an about. Uh, the about obviously is not going to be the same. This is called a directory or a folder. Uh, a folder on the actual server. Remember, the server is the place that's holding all of the uh, the, the site files. So this directory here is the the, the folder that is on in that within that on that server that uh, it is going to hold the files for this particular page and the page it usually ends in HTML or HTM and that's the file name that they're viewing you know that you're looking at so it could be you know for for Dave's designs from the earlier example it could be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Dave's designs dot com portfolio right here because that could be maybe the portfolio folder forward slash design one dot HTML all right so that's how that domain breaks down. Now when choosing the actual domain name, choosing the perfect name, you really have to make sure uh, that you, you include your main keyword or benefit in the key in the domain name if you can. And there's a reason for that. Also, you want to uh, try to keep the domain on the shorter end. Now nowadays, it may be getting a little bit more difficult than it was earlier on in the early, late 90s and early 2000s because as more and more people buy domains, the dot coms there's only so many dot coms and that's why there's a little mini real estate boom going on with the uh, dot coms with people buying them up in bulk and reselling them but you should be able to find a, a, a an attractive domain that conveys what your business does uh, all within the domain and there's a reason for that what if you were a Boston wedding planner all right and you just decided to go with, uh, let's say, uh, free pages. Which, which, which domain? If you were someone, you're not the planner. You're you're someone looking to plan a wedding in Boston. Let's say that. And you you're on the website. You're on the web. You Google it, and you see these the following two sites: freepages.com forward slash bwp forward slash tina, which is probably a woman named Tina who is a Boston wedding planner, but it just says bwp, so you don't know what the hell that is. And then you see another link that says bostonweddingplanner.com. Which site are you most likely to go to if you were looking for a Boston wedding planner? Obviously, you, your, your, your first instinct would be to jump right to Boston wedding planner. I mean, how much more of a targeted, uh, you know, find is that? You, that's exactly what you were looking for. And that's why we said here, if you can include your main keyword, uh, the better, especially if the keyword describes exactly what you're offering product wise or service wise. Now, you may become a little stuck just trying to write down and, and brainstorm uh, your domain name, and there's some great tools out there to make it really easy for you and give you some great ideas that you may not have otherwise thought of. And these are the tools we still use every you know every day, you know, when we're looking for a new domain, and they uh they just keep kicking out great ideas. You have instant domain search dot com. Google's keyword tool, nameboy.com, and bustername.com. So let's take a look at each of these. Instant domain search will allow you to come in here and start typing domain names and tell you what's available. So if you were looking at, uh, let's say, let's say a sporting goods store, so would say, or uh, actually, we, we just do an information product this time since we did an example already with the uh, store. Let's just say it was a golfing product for lowering your golf score. Instant domain search will allow you to come in and just put in lower your golf score. And you can see, well, I didn't spell it right, but 
LowerYourGolfScore.com is taken. It tells you instantly as you're typing. And it says .NET is available for $7. .org is available for $7. So you can come in here and you really want to get this .com first, like we were talking about. So you could play with words and say, uh, you know, low golf score dot com is available, uh, dot net is available, dot org is available. So, you know, drive 300 yards. Somebody got the dot com. And as you type stuff on there online, you can see it. It'll tell you instantly. All right. So that's a very handy tool that you don't have to keep pressing search. It'll just tell you live on the, on the spot if it's available or not. And that's instantdomainsearch.com. The next site, Nameboy, which is here at nameboy.com. When you get here, you can just put in a, a primary word that you want in your domain name. Let's say golf. And we put supplies. And you can say, do you want to rhyme? If you want to allow hyphens, you can click go, name boy, go. And what it will do is go through and add all kind of uh, uh, words to your main word to try to create a new domain for you that, that's available. And it tells you if the .com, .net, .org. And sometimes you won't find the best of names. Um, and then sometimes you'll find a real gem. Uh, you see here they have a supplies, supplies golf dot com so they, they reverse the order uh... let's see here golf courses and uh... they give you a, a wide selection then you can go back and play with the words and pick with other ones uh... pick other ones that may have more options let's see golf game supplier uh... not much but you get the idea so i would go back and and run some additional keywords in here that would uh, give us a better domain name. Now the next site is called Bust a Name, B-U-S-T-A-N-A-M-E, -E. and they do something similar, uh, but it gives you a little bit more of a variation. For example, if we come here, we put golf, and now it adds it to this list down here, and we put in uh, golfing uh, supply. As you put in words, they'll enter down here. Bust the name will start hitting random combinations for you of these words, and they'll tell you which ones are available right over here. So supply golfing right there dot com is available. So if that was your name that you wanted, you would just click on buy or uh, just go ahead and take it to your domain name uh, site of ch of choice and go ahead and purchase the the, the domain. So that's bustthename dot com. And the final tool is the Google Keyword Tool, which you can find by just putting Google Keyword Tool in Google, clicking on the top link and coming here. All right. Uh, for this particular uh, don domain name tactic, we're going to let Google tell us what keywords that people are actually typing in the search engines, and then we're going to pick a domain name based around that keyword that already gets searched. And we'll get into all you know this tactic as a as a as a strategy later on, but for for right now we're going to look at it uh, as a tool to to get a, a great domain name. So you want to start off by coming here into the words or phrases box and you just put in a word, a general word that sums up your product or service or your 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 niche, and that would say golfing. And let's put in this little capture image here. You just have to fill this in so that they know that you're not a robot and that you're an actual human being sitting at your computer uh, typing. So they want you to fill this in and press search. All right, so we see a lot of keywords here. Um, these numbers you don't need to pay too much attention to right now. They're telling you how much, uh, how many searches, approximate. And these are very rough sketch numbers of the search volume globally that each of these keywords gets. And you can see there are a lot of golf-related keywords. Now, a lot, some of these keywords are going to have uh, different brand names in them, like TaylorMade and uh, you know golf celebrities' names, Mizuno. You don't want those because those are trademarked, and obviously you wouldn't want to name your website after another brand or a company. But what you would do now is you would just click on uh, Download here, 
you could do one of two things. You could go through this list and pick out things that look like they would be good domains to you, one by one. So we have like golf packages, uh, golf stores. Yeah, most of these, you know, take you know, might, probably are taken because uh, you know, I'm just showing you for example purposes. Let me see if I can find one that uh, I know would be available. Usually, the three-word phrases are are available: golf stores online, golf superstores. Online golf store. Let's see. So then you would just come up here to the top and you can click download the selected ones or you can view them as text. Let's just view them as text for now. There's the keywords that we selected, so we're just going to copy those. Now you want to follow this uh, carefully because I want you to, to, to see something. You open up Notepad and you go ahead and paste your your keywords in here. Okay. Now you want to do this in a way that you want to remove all the spaces from each of these keywords. Let's say you have a hundred of them here, going all the way down the page of potential domain names that you 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 can use. You want to remove all the spaces from these phrases all at once without going through each line, so that they look like domain names. So you just go up to Edit, Replace. It says Find What. You just press Space. You want to find all the spaces right here. Replace with nothing. Don't type anything there. And click replace all. Close that up and you'll see that all the spaces have been removed. Copy that. And head on over to domaintools.com forward slash buy forward slash availability hyphen check forward slash bulk. Okay. It'll bring you to a bulk domain checker and allow you to paste your list in right there and click submit. Okay, so what comes up next is the results of all of your keywords turned into domain names. So what you'll see is a glo globe looking figure here means that it's taken. Somebody already bought it. And you can see all these are taken, all the dot coms. If it were available, you would see a white, empty white circle like this one uh, for the dot biz. Complete golf sets dot biz is available but we're looking for we're looking for a dot com initially remember so that's how you check all of the keywords that you got from google and plug them right in to see if the domains for those keywords are available now let's just say complete golf sets was available you would have a domain name that gets twelve thousand searches and uh, you know for the for twelve thousand people go to their computer and type in complete golf sets because they're looking to buy one and they would find your site and we'll talk to how to we'll talk about how to position that later uh, but that would be the ideal domain name for you so go through plug your general keywords in here um, a little tip is if you sign up for a Google AdWords account and then you use the tool with, after you log in they'll give you around 800 keywords that you can choose from but because you're not I'm not signed in they give you 100 results here all right those are the main tools that we use to brainstorm domain names and and between the four of those you're sure to find the perfect domain just remember to keep trying different combinations and so different combinations and and uh and different keywords as your root word whatever word you start off with would always result in a whole different batch of words on the back end to register your domain you can head over to fastersmarterbetter.com forward slash domains and you get some of the best rates that you can find online to get your domains uh, you know the ones that you've gone through the, the research to find you can lock them up before someone else goes and grabs them. just as a reminder remember to get the dot com first definitely want the dot com don't put any hyphens if you can avoid it no type of uh, special characters uh, in domain names you really can't have any characters other than the hyphen and the underscore uh, Another tip is if you can't quite get the domain that you want, for example, if it was uh if you were looking for if you had a sporting goods supply, well, let's say you had a left-handed golfer site. This isn't a bad idea, by the way. And you had golfinggoods.com, but you couldn't get leftygolfinggoods.com. You could always do a subdomain. So, which means if if you own golfinggoods.com. A subdomain is the part of the domain that comes before 
For example, here's faster, smarter, and better. You can have a domain, a, a word that goes before that, dot. So it could be lefty dot golfing goods dot com. So that still reads as lefty golfing good golfing goods dot com. But the domain that you bought was golfing goods dot com. Okay. So you can add a portion to your domain, a subdomain, after you've purchased it. And to get, the, to make, customize it the way you want. To get it to read the way you want. But generally speaking, you should get, if you can, the entire keyword in the dot com format, okay, and separate from your hosting. Without any hyphens or without any uh, misspellings. We'll get to that a little later as a strategy. All right, so give those tools a spin. Uh, start brainstorming. Obviously, if you don't have your business model picked out yet, you're not going to have a domain to start looking for. So you just want to take the notes and uh, and keep that fresh, so that after you do select your niche and your and your angle in your business that you want to uh, begin with, you'll know exactly how to go ahead and grab the domain. So let's move on to how to select and uh, sign up for your hosting.